ladies and gentlemen. It's a big, weird, wild world out there, folks, and here we stand. Al Pie del Cañon, ready for anything. I'm Rob, and you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> How are we doing out there, boys and girls? You are listening to The Probo Show live. Well, for a lucky few of you right now, from what I can see, that's Vero, Decor, Eugene, and probably more others that will arrive shortly. How are you doing? You're watching the Probo Show after dark, unless you're one of our angelic podcast listeners who are indeed listening to it. Don't worry, Be Happy is also in the chat. How are you doing there, friends? Yeah, this is Probo Show after dark. Um, once or twice every month, we do two um, more controversial shows, I guess, for our our more um, discerning listeners, and this is one of those. So let's not waste any time. I thoroughly tortured the elves this morning, and they give me one hell of a program for you. With today's 100 humans, I asked them, what profession do you trust less than a politician? <laughs> ¿En qué profesión confía menos que en un político? What, politici- uh, what profession do you trust less than a politician. In Complete the News, um, we'll find out what a landscaping crew mowed around. Mow is like a verb for cortar el césped. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know how you say that in Spanish. Is it ciega? Ciega? Um, and uh, a landscaping crew. Un uh, equipo de jardinería, I guess you'd say. Um, That coming up in the second half of the show, of course. In the first half, we have a juicy, unpopular opinion. The last Probo show after dark, I got some messages saying, Rob, yeah, no, it's very liberal. What are you doing? What are you doing? Everybody should be there, them. So I've got something nice for you capitalists out there today. (laughs) The more taxes you pay, the more weight your vote should have. Cuantos más impuestos pagues, más peso debería tener tu voto. Woo! Do I believe this? Do I not? Well, you'll find out in just a few minutes, my friends. Um, uh, Right now, I'm here. You're here. Let's see what's going on in the world, shall we? Uh, Let's see what's going on. Um, uh, (laughs) Decoy says, my proctologist. (laughs) What uh, profession do you trust less than a politician? (laughs) Um, teachers in Spanish public schools says, don't worry, be happy, ouch. That gets the <laughs> Provo stamp of approval. Eugene says, it's his first After Dark show. Oh, Eugene, welcome, welcome. Guys, a big round of applause for Eugene. Elves, can you hear that? Thank you, thank you. Here he is, come on. And indeed, a big round of applause for all of you out there in Radio Land. Okay, so let's uh, dig into some news. This piece of news coming from the LA Times... A Stanford scientist, after decades of study, concludes that we have no free will. Um, uh, un científico de Stanford, tras décadas de estudio, concluye no tenemos hmm, free will. Is it libre albedrío or something like that? Free will? You're going to tell me in the chat. How are you doing, Nuritam? So, Robert Sapo- Sapolsky. A Stanford scientist asserts that free will doesn't exist, challenging traditional beliefs about autonomy. In his book, Determined, he argues that human behavior is not a matter of conscious choice, but rather influenced by a number or numerous factors beyond our control. After extensive research spanning four decades, studying both humans and other primates, Sapolsky concludes that the concept of free will holds negligible validity, given the compelling evidence of various uncontrollable influences shaping our decisions and actions. Oh my gods, friends. Here we were, thinking that we were in control of our destiny, and according to this Stanford scientist, not so much. I'm actually fascinated by this subject, um, and I may even pick up a copy of the book. The book is called determined the author the author robert saplosky if you can um uh, sapolsky sorry if you can't get that down don't worry it'll be in my patreon tomorrow morning where i list all the wonderful links and news articles that we use in the show um but yeah that makes sense right because it doesn't just have to be um the hand of fate or um or kismet 
that pushes us in certain direct directions. Indeed, it can be actual physical things. Climate change is affecting our decision making. You know, um, uh, you know, hunger, all these kinds of things. Uh, let's see what people are saying. Ole Rob says, "Don't worry, be happy." Does that mean? Does that does Ole Rob translate as? Será posible? Vaya nivelazo. <laughs> I think so. At least for me. Dakoy says Nivalazo. Yep. Libre Albedrio. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Look at me. I don't even need the natch tonight. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, concluye que no tenemos. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Vero. This one's for you. Será posible. Vaya nivelazo. <laughs> um, I love your guitar. Says, yeah, if you're not watching the show, friends, you're missing my awesome um, Union Jack guitar in the background, and you also may have missed my little dog jumping up at me there. She was she she had an opinion about free will. What can we say? Okay, next. Um, wow, an intro, a really fascinating article by the Atlantic. Finally, we have proof that the internet is worse. <laughs> Surely the proof is our eyes, right? We finally have proof that the internet is worse by the Atlantic. Por fin tenemos pruebas uh, uh, de que in, el internet o internet es peor. Uh, the article from the Atlantic discusses the increasing scrutiny big tech companies face regarding their algorithmic influence and potential antitrust violations. Recent lawsuits against giants like Google, Amazon, highlight manipulative powers of these companies um, through their algorithms affecting what people see online. That Come gets on. the Probo Come stamp on. of approval. Absolutely. Haven't we been saying this in like every single Probo show from, um, uh, from when we started? I think so. I mean, people, yeah, I get involved in this argument. I've been involved in an argument countless times, which is, no, no, people are stupid and gullible. Uh, sorry, people are not stupid and gullible. Anyone can be prone to propaganda. Anyone can be indoctrinated in any belief, um, supposing that belief is repeated often enough on enough platforms. Um, and, and, and it's great. For me, I think it's amazing that these companies are now facing tougher scrutinies because these algorithms, these these mathematical formulas that keep us inside these internet bubbles, that keep us thinking in a certain pattern or throw us down rabbit holes of thought, you know, they're pernicious. They're designed only to, um, only to keep our attention, but not necessarily for our own benefit, no. For the benefit of the advertisers that pay for Google and Amazon and Facebook and all these companies. Yeah. Oof. Am I right, guys? <laughs> I think so. Um, let's see. Um, where were we? They're wheeled through their algorithms, affecting what people see online, the products they're nudged towards, and even the prices they pay. So these legal actions have unearthed practices like Google potentially prioritizing lucrative search results and Amazon's Project Nessie, which allegedly manipulated product prices across the market. These revelations are fostering a broader understanding of how such companies might be degrading the online experience, confirming suspicions of manipulation and underscoring the need for greater transparency and regulation in the tech industry. Thank God, right? Jeez Louise. I mean, thank God, dudes. I mean, how long do we have to go on, um, you know, how long do we have to go on receiving, getting these the same kind of messages posted to us, these little kind of internet bubbles that people live in? The, the real danger of these things, these al algorithms, are the fact that they convince us that we're right. And the whole kind of purpose of this show is to convince us that there are other opinions that still have validity. For example, I don't care that much, a little bit, <laughs> but I don't care that much if you, you tell me I'm wrong in my unpopular opinions. In fact, I encourage it. Why? Because it's not about being right or wrong. It's about being made aware that there is a whole spectrum of gray in between the black and white. And that the internet lies to us. It has its own narrative, its own... Um, driving force, usually backed by money. Let's, let's, let me tell you something. The truest thing you will ever hear, my friends, is people will tell you this is the information age. 
Information is power. No, no. This is not the age of information. This is the age of attention. The currency of the internet is not your information. It's your attention. To keep you glued to one platform as long as possible or for as long as possible so you can keep on seeing those ads and the companies can get their revenue and slowly get rich by indoctrinating us in stupid beliefs. Woo! Jeez, what did Rob take today? (laughs) <laughs> and then finally, here we go. Finally, <clears throat> birth rate. This is uh, again. We are we, we've we, we're spoiled with riches of um, articles today. This one coming from smescience.com. Um, birth rates have dropped around the world in the past two centuries. This started in France, and researchers now know why. Fascinating. Now we've speculated on this on the show. We've we've reported on the the drop um, in in birth rates throughout the world, and particularly in Asia. But it's also a phenomenon that's happening here in Europe, and really throughout the world, um, right? And we speculated as to why is it because of um, uh, higher education? Is it because the economy, um, uh, the cost of living has um, has risen to us? To a state where both parents have to work, it's almost impossible to afford having a child nowadays. Well, this article by um, by this scientific um, publication, ZME Science, has another uh, theory. So, in the 18th and 19th centuries, a significant demographic shift occurred, marked by a substantial drop in fertility rates. Ooh. Um, in... Um, initiating modern def- demographic trends. This phenomena first emerged in France during the 18th century, a century before any other country, and wasn't triggered by economic or biological factors. Can anybody guess what it was that triggered this? Well, according to this article, it was by secularization, specifically the, a decline in religious adherence. The waning influence of the Catholic Church, which began in the mid-18th century amidst growing antagonism towards religious elites, allowed for fertility control practices the Church had opposed. This early demographic transition, crucial for societal development, had profound implications, influencing living standards, economic growth, and population dynamics, not only in France, but globally. What do you think of that, friends? I mean, there is certain evidence, I would say, personally, um, against this. For example, one of the most booming, um, one of the populations that's actually booming right now is in India. I mean, I've got to admit, I'm not, um, I'm not a complete expert in, um, in Hindu belief, but I'm, um, I don't know how far they go to, um, towards promoting kind of having big families. I'm sure somewhat. Um, but yeah, fascinating article nonetheless. What do you think about that? Is secularization um, or a waning belief in organized religion to being partly to blame for um, for the falling birth rates throughout, throughout the world? I can see that being one of many factors. I think I think certainly um, economic factors do um, play a big part. You don't have to have a lot of babies, says Eugene. True story, dude. True story. <laughs> Uh, what's going on in the chat? I see people talking about my dog. <laughs> Can I ask you for something, Rob? Please don't break the mic. Yeah, today I'm not breaking the mic. I actually edited edited that part out of the podcast. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so I won't break the mic today. I may play with it a little bit. Uh, it's a talk of mine. It's a little bit of a compulsion. Um, my guitar needs to be fixed, says Eugene. You can't have mine. It's mine. I love it. <laughs> okay, you know what we're going to do, friends? We're going to get straight into today's Unpopular Opinion. Unpopular Opinion. Okay, my friends, what even is an unpopular opinion? Well, it's a brain fat. Un pedo cerebral, un pedo mental. I share it with you on my social media. You guys vote there. But the real decision makers are the wonderful men and women who join me in the chat. The live audience today, Eugene Decoy, don't worry, be happy, Nuriatam, and many others. 
Okay, guys, so here we go. Today's unpopular opinion is the more taxes you pay, the more weight your vote should have. Cuantos más impuestos pagues, um, más peso debería tener tu voto. All right. As always, friends, I tortured those elves. Oh, my God. Yes, I did. And they provided me with some pros and cons. Let's get into the pro arguments right now. Okay. Financial contribution. We'll break the pros into four things. Financial contribution, economic stake, incentive for tax compliance, and decision-making maturity. Let's begin. Those who pay more taxes might feel they contribute or contribute more to the country's welfare and therefore should have a say proportional to their contribution in deciding how tax funds are used, which includes electing officials who make these decisions. Next, high taxpayers often being wealth creators have a significant stake in the economic conditions of the country. This argument posits that their enhanced voting power ensures a, condu a conducive business and economic environment potentially benefiting everyone. Hmm. Next, um, if paying more taxes comes with increased influence in government decisions, individual, individuals and businesses might be less likely to avoid taxes and more likely to strive for higher earnings and tax contributions. Next, um, there's an argument that those who have managed to acquire, um, to acquire wealth um, and, and consequently, you know, pay more taxes, possess the decision-making skills beneficial for state governance and thus should have more say in political matters. All right. There are those are your pro arguments. Let's get into the cons, los contras. Okay, and this, if I'm honest with you, it's in this argument where I kind of feel like I lie. But again, that's my opinion, friends. And as Grandpa Bo used to say, opinions, they're like buttholes. Everybody has one. They all stink, including mine. So let's get into this. I'll break down the con arguments into four things. Number one, inequality. Number two, wealth does not necessarily equate to wisdom. Number three, erosion of social cohesion. And number four, corruption and power accumulation. Ooh, yeah, we're getting serious today. Told you, this is why these are the after dark episodes. All right, here we go. Let's start. The principle goes against the fundamental democratic, democratic idea of one person, one vote potentially leading to an oligarchic system where the wealthy have disproportionate control over the government, diminishing the voice and rights of the less affluent. Okay. Basically meaning, you know, um, the poor people will have less active part in government. And, you know, there are a lot more poor people in the world than there are rich. Let's get that right. I mean, we have a name for that already. It's called plutocracy. And I can't see any way... Where the richer you are, the more control you are, have over government doesn't end in a plutocracy, personally. Okay, next one. Financial success doesn't necessarily equate to understanding or prioritizing the common good. Wealthy individuals might be detached from the struggles of the average citizen and make choices that further widen societal gaps. And I think that's pretty evident, right? And it's, and again, isn't it evident that wealth does not equate to wisdom? I mean, how often do we have to talk about Elon Musk before we all understand that? Ooh, friends. That gets the Probo <laughs> stamp of approval. All right. <laughs> Let's continue. Let's continue. Next. Um, uh, such a system could increase societal divides and tensions as policies may um, continually favor, favor the wealthy, leading to societal instability, undermines the principle of equal representation, potentially leading to civil unrest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, we, we, we've seen this already in Europe, right? The French Revolution. Come on. Um, let's continue. Um, the final point in the con column, allowing more substantial voting power based on wealth could lead to corrupt practices like vote buying, 
money hoarding and using financial leverage for the political gains, distancing the political process from ethical standards and considerations for overall welfare. In fact, okay, that's the end of the pros and cons, but in fact, as a little aside, to editorialize a little on on these points and maybe kind of provide some counter arguments to the pros there. Is not one of the biggest problems we have with our current political systems the influence money and businesses already have, right? The power of the tobacco industry, the power that the um, uh, that the the health or the pharmaceutical industry seems to wield over our politicians. The the yeah, I mean the power really lies in business, right? So many politicians use their um, uh, use their standing right now as a kind of, you know, a, a soft interview for um, a potential job on the board of directors in an energy or pharmaceutical company. Do we want to facilitate that relationship anymore? If anything, shouldn't we pull it, be pulling those two parties aside? Shouldn't there, shouldn't there, as well as being a separation of church and state, be a separation of wealth and state? I would argue that they should. But look, no one cares what I think. We care what you think. Let me um, take a quick dive into the chat and see peop- what people are saying. Okay. So Eugene here said, you don't have to make a lot of babies. One or two, that's enough. <laughs> I'm not interested in making babies. I'm interested in practicing making them and, and that's where it ends. <laughs> For now, at least. <laughs> okay, let's see. So Vero here. Um, on the topic more taxes you pay the more weight your vote should have here we go so Vero here says true when you pay taxes you have the right to know what is being done with that money Nuriatam says false only rich only rich people decide matters that affect everyone then only rich people decide that completely completely and let's face it if you if you have accumulated that much wealth what have you actually had to do to do that you know uh, how many nice altruistic people are in the billionaire class <laughs> look that's conjecture stricken from the record but you know anyway let's continue don't worry be happy says yes just as it is now influential rich and powerful will always find their way i mean really <clears throat> to some kind of extent this is already happening right how is it that elon musk can can have a platform like he does and wield the kind of power and sway that he does. How is that? You know? How is it that Facebook, a company, can sway elections? I mean, you've all heard about the Cambridge Analytica scandal. I'm not going to go into that here and now, but you've heard about that. How is it a company can influence the decision-making abilities of a country? Here I'm talking specifically about um, the 2016 presidential election in the States. I'm talking about Brexit, for example, with regards to the Cambridge Analytica thing. So, yeah, fair points here. The Koi says, no, it's a way to um, no, it's a way to redistribute income. Exactly. They would lobby for their interests. Um, don't worry, be happy, says, I don't like the idea that what only matters is the money you bring to society. Exactly. Exactly. And there are so many more things involved in making a healthy political decision. Ethics. I mean, how many ethical companies are there out there? How many ethical CEOs? How many ethical wealthy people are there? Hmm. Um, Let's see. Decoy says, plus the really rich have mechanisms to avoid paying so much taxes. True story. I mean, one, the only kind of glimmer of truth i see in the pro column is yeah perhaps we could convince rich people to pay more taxes if they if there were some kind of benefit but isn't the benefit of being extraordinarily wealthy enough if anything um uh, should those who are already winning at life should those really have a say isn't it the poorest in society that should be protected by democracy you know and we, would they, would something like this not turn the society into a plutocracy where the wealthy control things? Hmm. Anyway, let's continue. Eugene says, I disagree. Uh, in my country, rich men almost all are almost always thieves. I love to speak about sex, politics, and gender. <laughs> me too. It gets me into a lot of trouble. All right, anyway. <laughs> so there you go, friends. That is today's unpopular opinion. 
The more taxes you pay, the more weight your vote should have. True or false? Just so you know, I asked people on Instagram and they said... 64% false. That's right, friends. There is hope for the world. 64% false. ¿Cuántos más impuestos pagues, más peso debería tener tu voto? Um, By the way, this unpopular opinion was given to us by Pedro from Instagram. Thank you, sir. You're not here, but we're thinking of you. All right, guys, um, I'm going to post a poll in the chat, and you're going to tell me. Is this true? Is this false? Friends, so many things you could have been doing this evening. Instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with me, and it means the world. I will see you in a few short minutes. Hey, guys. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind-the-scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. And you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P-R-O-B-O-H. Okay, on with the show. The Probo Show! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Probo Show live at six. That Why did I say that so weird? I have no idea. At six thirty in the evening, yes, it's Probo Show after dark. A big hug and a kiss to my delicious angelic podcast listeners. All of those of you guys, by the way, who've rated the podcast, and I know a bunch of you have. Thank you so much. Means the absolute world. The higher when you rate the podcast and you leave comments and and reviews and stuff, it helps the those algorithms pick it up or whatever. It's, it's just brilliant. The, the community is growing um, all the time, and you guys are the best. And it's all because of you. You're rocking it. All right, um, what have you missed if you've just tuned in? Well, we were speaking about the Stanford scientist. After decades of study, he concluded that we don't have free will. I'm talking, of course, of Robert Sapolsky, Um, and his book, Determined. I'm going to pick up a copy of this um, at some point. I know I'm going back home for Christmas, so I'll maybe pick up a copy there and read it, and I'll let you know. It does seem fascinating, though. All right, and then we moved on to um, uh, having proof, according to The Atlantic, that the internet is worse. (laughs) And yeah, no kidding, right? You know, do you remember back in the day, before all the ads and the algorithms, where you just followed someone because you thought, oh, these are interesting posts. (laughs) And you weren't falling down really ludicrous rabbit holes like Flat Earth and and fake moon landings. Remember? Do you remember that, guys? Oh, beautiful. And then finally, we looked at, um, wow, another really fascinating article by ZME or ZME Science that claims to know why and when and where the decline in birth rates started. Apparently, um, this article makes the claim that it was in France around the 18th, 19th century, um, and due to the secularization of France, the declining belief or the declining influence of the Catholic Church. Probably, maybe, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is a contributing factor, but it's certainly one of many in my mind. Anyway, then we moved right into today's unpopular opinion, which is the more taxes you pay, the more weight your vote should have. Cuantos más impuestos pagues, más peso debería tener tu voto. Um, Fascinating discussion. Um, Let's pick up with what the chat has said, then we'll move on to a message or two I received um, on Instagram. Decoy says, maybe that's the reason behind the manifesto some billionaires signed in the U.S. asking to pay more taxes. Whether they signed it or not, they definitely should be. (laughs) They're not paying enough. Um, uh, at At the end of the day, I have the same opinion about everything involving having more of something, whether it be wealth, IQ, or education, giving some more rights. Yeah, is the idea not equal rights? Yeah, we we did this the other day. We this is a little quasi series we're doing on voting, um, just ahead of the craziness that's going to happen um, ahead of the of the uh, elections that are upcoming. 
I mean, it's worth talking about now, right? It's worth talking about. I mean, is it, it's worth talking about now and always, really. Um, you know, does intelligence, IQ, mean you should have more rights with regards to voting? Well, no, because your intelligence quotient leaves out a bunch of um, information that is necessary. You know, ethics, empathy. Surely those are integral parts of... Um, of what makes someone eligible to vote, or at least what makes gives someone good decision-making capabilities when it comes to voting, right? Um, and here we're talking about finance. Should a, should someone's um, financial wealth, should someone who pays more taxes deserve more of a vote? I mean, I don't think so. I don't think so. But let's get let's continue. Um, let's see. I have to confess, best part of my day. Oh, yeah, I was saying through the break that I was just saying thank you, guys. And it's worth saying for all you guys who download the podcast, too. Look, it's the be- when I say it's the best part of my day every day, I really mean it. And just a massive thank you if you're um, if you're downloading and rating and subscribing to the podcast. Um, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. And Eugene and Decoy here. Eugene, Decoy, I love you guys, too. He says that it's, they say it's the best part of their day, too. Um... Uh, don't worry be happy is um, asking about a guest that i had on the other show that i do the lunchtime show and asking if she learned english at vaughn um i think so i think so at least partly don't worry be happy uh, the bridge says hello so sorry i'm late no worries better late than never bridge um big cheese is taking the stage tomorrow morning he is he is indeed all right all right let's get into some messages i received on um, on instagram Layla writing to us again. Welcome back, Layla. I haven't seen a message from you in a while. Says, no way, that's totally unfair. What about working class folks? They contribute to our community just as much. Um, Democracy is about equal voice, not pay to play. That gets the Provo stamp of approval. Yeah, I would agree with that, right? It's one man, not one. it's, It's one man, one vote, right? It's not one dollar, one vote, right? Okay, anyway. Um, Let's continue. Tommy says, hold up. Um, Isn't that plutocracy? It totally disregards ethical considerations for democratic inclusion. Yeah, I mean, again, agreed, Derek. Well, it does make some sense. Okay, someone who actually agrees with this point. It does make some sense. If you contribute more, maybe you should have a bit more say. It's like shareholders in a company. Invest invest more, get more sway. It's just business, right? Well, yeah, Derek, I, I get your point there, right? Um, when you're talking about investors in a company. But a, a country isn't a company. This is what blows my mind when business people take office. Um, a company... Uh, sp- specifically a company with shareholders it's only it's only obligation it's only moral um standpoint the only thing it needs to take into account is being profitable making money for its shareholders that is the only let's not kid ourselves whether they treat their employees well or not well whether they're responsible with the environment or not their only obligation is to their shareholders, okay? Now, a country is very different, whereas, yes, it does have to be economically stable, try and increase your GDP, that kind of thing. Okay, I get you. But not also, um, probably the most important thing a government does is take care of its people, make sure everyone is prosperous and healthy. And that's where the two things kind of start to, to, start to um, uh, divide, the two paths, um, between um, a business and what is um, the running of a country. Okay? I mean, ideally, a company would be ethical and would really take its employees' welfare into account. But as we know, that is not the case. Right? Anyway, let's um, continue. Thank you for that, Derek. All you guys on Instagram are right to me. Uh, Probo approve? That gets the Probo stamp of approval. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, let's see, Eugene joining us from Russia. He says, in my country, I can't speak freely. Yeah, that's sad, Eugene. That's sad, and you should be able to. That's sad, but hopefully things in the future will get better, man. Um, all right, all right. 
Should we? Do you guys want to know how the vote went down? I'm dying to tell you. Eh? I'm dying to tell you. Okay, so I made the statement. Today's unpopular opinion is: the more taxes you pay, the more weight your vote should have. Cuanto más impuestos pagues, más peso debería tener tu voto. Again, it was Pedro from Instagram, our legal correspondent on the show, who um, suggested this. He doesn't believe it either, by the way, um, but it's something he and I have both heard um, uh, suggested, you know, over the Christmas table. <laughs> so let's get into it. I, I made that statement to you guys, and you guys said... 80%... False. Yeah. Whereas it does seem to make a lot of sense, right? If the more you contribute, the more the more sway you should have. You know, <clears throat> one of the great things about publicly run companies or companies that are um, or industries that are run by a government before the advent of a um, of a corporation, um, you used to be able to, in theory, you could move a company say a coal mine in the where i'm from for example mining and and um, the manufacturing and factories is what the north of england was um, was famous for during the boom of the industrial revolution now these companies that were run by the government could actually pick up and move shop to another area if they saw that area um had real problems um employing people so they could run a company in theory, in theory at a loss for the benefit of the public. Okay, and then we get then we see the advent of the corporation and and the um, and the the sway in focus from the public good to the um, uh, to, uh, to to private financial interests. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, running a country, um, governance is about more than just cash and yeah it is one man one vote that's the that's the idea of democracy it's not pay to play because at the end of the day not every billionaire earned his money on his own a lot of people have inherited wealth wisdom does not equate to wealth all the time do we really want uh, do we really want our country run like a plutocracy where the rich make the decisions for the poor do we want to erode social cohesion in that way um, and it almost foster corruption and the accumulation of power? I don't think so. But that's just my opinion, guys. And opinions are like buttholes. They all stink. Even mine. <laughs> all right, friends. All right. Well, there you go. That was today's unpopular opinion. Let's move on to 100 humans. Oh my God, guys, it was a long walk to work today across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys. And on that walk, I encountered a hundred humans. And I asked them all a question. Today's question is, let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Is what profession do you trust less than a politician? What profession do you trust less than a politician? ¿En qué profesión confías menos que en un político? I asked them that question. They gave me their answers. I have the top seven answers here. Your job in the chat is to identify those top seven answers. All right, let's go. Oof. Nuria Tam, killing it first off the bat, first off the mark here. Nuria Tam says, a priest. A priest. Is a priest a profession? Yeah, I guess so, right? I guess it is. Is Priest there? Mm, no, it's not. It's a good answer, though. It's a good answer. Um, we should raise a mon monument to Grandpa Bo, says Vero. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Okay. Cheese Chat says... How are you doing, Cheese Chat? It's been a while. Cheese Chat says... A tow truck driver. Oof, that's it. I, I don't even, wouldn't even know how you say it, a tow truck driver in Spanish. Let me give my translation elf a kick. Ouch. <laughs> Un conductor de grúa. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Será posible. Vaya nivelazo. Come on. Your boy's killing it today. <laughs> a tow truck driver. Is tow truck driver there? No, it's not. Jeez Louise, guys. 
I know this is the after dark, but come on. Okay, <laughs> Eugene says, a prostitute. <laughs> come on. <laughs> it's not there. Come on. Ah, Gruista says Vero. Well done. Será posible. Vaya nivelazo. Um, <clears throat> a fortune teller. Wow, that is a good answer. You're getting a... That gets the Holy probo God. stamp of approval. Um, a fortune teller. Is a fortune teller there? Sorry. Guys, come on. An influencer, says uh, Nuriatam. An influencer. It's not there. Wow. Okay. Once the ball gets rolling, you will get there. Once the ball gets rolling, you will get there. And I think Cheese Chat is the man to do that. Out of the chaos of today's 100 humans, Cheese Chat steps out of the cloud and fog and screams, a used car salesman. <laughs> Vendedor de coches usados, o de segundo, segundo mano. Used car salesman. Is used car, sal car, uh, car salesman there? Yes, it is. Well done. Used car, car salesman is there. It's the seventh most popular answer with seven of a hundred humans saying a used car salesman. Decoy says <laughs> a tax advisor. A tax advisor. Mm. Oh. I'll tell you what, a tax advisor may work for one of the institutions that another person in the in the list is you know dealing with finance a financial someone who works in a financial institution but a tax advisor in particular it's not there it's not there um let's see uh, a cop a policeman says um uh, says cheese chat a policeman it's not there i have to give you guys some clues Hmm. What about a Bible salesman, says Vero? <laughs> a Bible salesman. Well, no, it's not there. Neither is a beauty coach. Sorry, guys. Don't worry, be happy, says a bank advisor. Let's just say a banker, right? A banker, someone who works in a bank. Do you trust bankers less than politicians? I'll tell you what. A uh, hundred humans don't trust them as much as politicians because it's there. Well done. Okay, guys, you are officially off the mark now. You have two of the seven there. Oh, some great answers in the chat that should be there, really. A builder and a mechanic. Oof. Oh, yeah, you get it's gonna it's gonna take a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. You, the flange is broken. That's another 300 euros. <laughs> Great answers, but sadly, not there. Okay. In recent, in recent times, I'm going to give you a clue for one of them. In recent times, um, we've heard the phrase fake news used a lot by a certain, um, by a certain uh, hotel owner. <laughs> fake, you have fake news. That's true for the people who believe that. Who is he talking about? The coy has an answer. Don't worry, be happy as an answer. They both say journalists. Is journalists there? Oh, of course it is. Well done. I'll tell you something. It's a sad, sad state of affairs when we don't believe journalists, isn't it? Isn't it? Doesn't that paint a bad, a dim picture of us? Um, but yeah, journalist is there with uh, how many? 14 of 100 humans saying journalist. It's the third most popular answer. 14 of 100 humans. Um, periodistas in Spanish. All right, here we go. Well done, Vero. Don't worry, be happy. And decoy. Eugene says, my ex-girlfriend. Is that a profession, Eugene? <laughs> it's not there. Eugene's ex-girlfriend is not there. And neither is insurance salesman. Sorry, sorry. I can't believe people don't trust cops. Yeah, I don't mean either. So here we go. What profession do you trust less than a politician? Okay, let me give you another clue. Um, this is a person who sells something, um, a particular thing. 
It's not something... Um, oh, God, this is a hard one to give you a clue for. It's not something you can, like, buy and put in your pocket. It's something you buy and you probably... Um, and then you probably live there. <laughs> oh, jeez. What a clue. Too big a clue, I think. <laughs> Who is it you wouldn't trust? It is a salesman. It is a salesman. So you would buy something from these people. But um, it's not something, it's something big you'd buy from them. You might, if so big, you might even, um, you might even live in it. <laughs> Cheese Chat says a realtor, a realtor, um, uh, or we would call it in England, a real estate agent or an estate agent um, in Spanish, I believe, um, agente inmobiliario. Okay, is it there? Of course it is. Well done, guys. Yeah, a real estate agent or an estate agent or a realtor. Well done, well done. Okay, <laughs> wow. Cheese chat's on fire. Um, we kind of had YouTuber in the chat before, like influencer, a violin maker. Why wouldn't you trust a violin maker? <laughs> a dentist, a preacher. None of those are there. Oh, 100 humans, I said none of them. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, the guy with the trombone, he, he just took a break. <laughs> All right, here we go. Another one, a clue. Um, police person isn't there. A police person isn't there. But this person is someone involved in the law. In fact, if there's ever an infraction, you might go to one of these people to help you. To help represent you. Oh, don't worry. Be happy as an answer. Cheese Chat has an answer. Decoy has an answer. They all say a lawyer. Is lawyer there? Of course. <laughs> of course it's there. Come on, lawyer. All right. Famously, um, uh, famously um, untrustworthy individuals. Okay, there are two more to get. <laughs> okay, this is probably the most, the f- number one is probably the most annoying phone call you'll have <laughs> probably the most annoying phone call you'll get in fact there are lists out out there that you can put yourself on to avoid receiving this kind of phone call hmm who am i talking about i know a lot of our international listeners are thinking damn how do i say this in english you can tell me in spanish if you want <laughs> okay, we're getting some answers coming in, and I know what they mean, and they're all kind of right. Uh, Decoy says a spam caller. Um, Nuria Tam says a mobile phone company. Um, yeah, a telemarketer, we would call them. A telemarketer. And I'm not sure how you say that in Spanish. Probably you say telemarketer, if I, if I had to guess. And it's there. Well done. Number one answer. Okay. Uh, all right. The last one I'm not sure you're going to get, guys, but I have faith in you. I'm going to try and give you a clue. These are people who, um, teleoperadores, thank you, thank you, Vero. Dude, Vero's on fire. Será posible, vaya nivelazo. <laughs> Cheese Chat says, answers one to nine should just be salesperson. <laughs> Telescope lens polisher, Cheese Chat, come on now. Come on now. All right, last one sixth most popular answer it is um these are the people responsible um for oof, pretty much maybe all of our purchases they are the people who spend companies money in informing us of new products of things we need or even to um, convince us that we need things creating needs don draper was one of these <laughs> Oof, now you're thinking Don Draper, Mad Men. Hmm. All right. Decoy kind of has an answer for this. Nuria Thomas hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Cheese Chat says, my boss, Dan. <laughs> All right. Advertising, advertisers says Nuria Tam, publicist says Decoy, an advertising executive. It is there. Well done. <laughs> Wow, that was a tough one today. That was a tough one, and you guys nailed it. All right, here we go. Let's go through the list, my friends. Oh, sorry, one second, B. All right, here we go. I asked our 100 humans to name a profession 
en profesión, a profession, you trust less, confiant menos, than a politician. A profession you trust less than a politician. In position number seven was a used car salesman. Vendedor de coches usados, coches de segundo mano. In position number six, we had an advertising executive. Don Draper, basically. Eight of a hundred humans said that one. In position number five, we had lawyers, abogados, not avocados, right? I know my pronunciation is bad. Abogados. In position number four, we had, sadly, journalists. Come on. We shouldn't be distrusting journalists. Sadly, we live in that kind of an environment, though. In position number three. Ah, sorry. No, four was bankers. God. Bankers. And it rhymes. <laughs> three was journalists. Four was bankers. In position number two. We had estate agents. Um, immobiliarios. Agentes immobiliarios. And finally, in position number one. We was telemarketers. Well done to all of those who are there who got that one. Who got it in the chat, actually? Someone got it in the chat. Telemarketers. Yeah, it was uh, Nuriatam, the coin, and, um, and Vero. Well done, guys. Let's go to Complete the News. Complete the News. I'm going to pause the timer on the chat. I'm going to pause the timer. We're going to go a little longer today and do this news story. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? We're not restricted to the radio airtime. So let's do it. Okay, this is complete the news. I'm going to give you a news headline. Un titular, right? But I'm going to leave off some important information. If you're one of the people watching the show, and I can see there are a few of you out there um, that are not participating, okay? This is your moment because all you have to do is write A, B, or C. A, B, or C. All right, so here we go. Landscaping crew mows around blank, assuming it is a Halloween or it was a Halloween prop. So, landscaping crew, un equipo de jardinería. And to mow, it's a verb meaning to cortar el césped, cut the grass. I think he's saying in Spanish, um, ciega with an S, ciega. Not ciega, that's blind, ciega. So, el equipo de jardinería ciega alrededor de blank, asumiendo que era un accesorio de Halloween. But what is it? Is it A, a black duffel bag full of drugs? A, a black duffel bag full of drugs. <laughs> is it B, un bolsa de lona, I think you say in Spanish. Um, llena de drogas. Is it B, an unconscious police officer? An unconscious police officer. Un agente de policía inconsciente. Or is it C, a dead body? <laughs> All right, there you go. A landscaping crew mows around blank, assuming it was a Halloween prop. But what was it? Was it A, a black duffel bag full of drugs, B, an unconscious police officer, or C, a dead body? What's up, Gandalf? Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Um, all right, I see the votes coming in. So far, it's a tie between C and B. Uh, unconscious police officer and a dead body. No one's subscribing to the idea. It's um, A, a black duffel bag full of drugs. That could be a Halloween prop. Come on. Okay, it seems like C is in the lead, a dead body. All right. Let's see if you're right, guys. Okay. So, um, a landscaping crew, assuming that something was a Halloween prop, more around it, but what was it? All right, landscaping crew, mows around. The answer is C, a dead body. Well done. Well done. You win, guys. Jeezy Louise. There you go. Um, in a bizarre incident in China Grove, North Carolina, Gandalf, one of my patrons of the stream. Thank you so much, by the way, Gandalf. Um, 
he lives in in North Carolina. This coming from WDBO. In a bizarre incident in China Grove, North Carolina, the body of 33, uh, 34-year-old Robert Owens was overlooked for several days <laughs> as it was mistaken for a Halloween decorate several days. What was it that gave it away? The smell? I don't know. Um, <laughs> the body was found lying face down in the grass near a residence, adding to a the peculiar oh, the peculiarity of the situation. A landscaping worker had seen the body a day before its discovery by the police, but did not report it, assuming it was a Halloween prop. The worker even mowed around the body. Wow. <laughs> well, the good news here, guys, at the end of this story, you find out that this person, this poor person, hadn't died. Um, through uh, suspicious circumstances or foul play. Um, Just a weird, tragic accident. But wow, sad that you had to stay there for a few days. Guys, what a show. (laughs) It was amazing. Thank you so much. We've seen so much news today. From um, mowing around dead bodies to untrustworthy um, untrustworthy, uh, professions to um, uh, taxes and should they be linked to voting we looked at this we looked at free will we looked at the, the internet getting worse and birth rates and theories for why they are dropping guys what a show thank you so much for being here i will see you next time